Seriously, I just had it. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing the fuel pulsation dampener removal or elimination uh, for an FD RX-7. I'm going to go through a, a quick breakdown and a, a walkthrough of what we're going to be doing here. So the tools that you'll need uh, for this are obviously the tools to get the fuel rails out of the car. If you haven't invested in uh, a metric screwdriver set, I would highly recommend them, especially to get out these guys. The, the standard ones just wiggle around in there and these screws, you got to take them seriously because they can strip out pretty easily. So here's our primary rail. We're going to be removing this and replacing it with a barb fitting. This is a quarter inch NPT thread pitch. So you'll need this fitting and it goes out to 5 sixteenths. You can find those at Amazon uh, or you know, if you're lucky enough to try to find something like that at the, the local parts store, good luck. You also need a quarter inch NPT tap. And what I've done is I've measured the depth in my rail using a pick and then I taped it. And then I just moved that over and I taped the same length over to my tap just so that I'm not going too far in and risk damaging the threads. I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling this guy apart. Now I already have the injectors out of this. You're just gonna to wanna to break this down completely so that whenever you're done tapping it out, you can get rid of all the shavings and all the other stuff that's in there and clean it out thoroughly because you don't want that stuff lurking around in your fuel system. Now we've got our primary injector fuel rail out. So what I'm gonna do is move to where I have the vise and then we're just gonna tap this out and put threads in it. Now, normally whenever you're tapping something out, you would need to drill it first. And whenever you're doing quarter inch NPT, it calls for a 7 16 drill bit. But this does not need that. So you can just go straight into it. Whenever you're tapping, you need to make sure that you're not getting it at an angle. You wanna be perfectly flush with this so that it sits down and just be extra careful and you know lube it up with some WD-40 or you know motor oil or gear oil. Synthetic gear oil works great whenever you're doing drill stuff. So I ran into a little bit of a snafu here. Uh, <laughs> my tap is too big to fit <laughs> into uh, my tap holder. So I'm just gonna have to improvise and use a wrench. Even though a wrench isn't really the, the right tool for this job, I was excited to get things done and I was extra careful to keep the tap very nice and straight so that whenever it came time to put my fitting in, it would fit flush against the fuel rail. I was also careful to make sure that it stayed well lubricated and for about every three to four half turns I gave it clockwise, I would come through and give it about a half turn counterclockwise just to make sure the metal shavings didn't get in the way of me cutting in new threads. As we're looking at it, you can see there's a ton of metal shavings and crap down in there that you want to blow out. If you have an air compressor, um, you know, you can spray it out with some carb cleaner or whatever. You just want to make sure this is really clean before you put it back in. But you can see it really just did a fantastic job of just putting the threads in there. And we'll clean this up and then we'll head back to the garage. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a Teflon tape. Whenever you're using an NPT threaded anything, they have a taper to them. So you want to use good Teflon tape. You need to make sure, I'm using Blue Monster. Uh, I haven't used it before, but you can get it at Home Depot. You need to make sure that whatever you're using, you can use, you know, for oil and gasoline and all that fun, happy stuff. I ended up cutting the Teflon tape in half lengthways just so that I could wrap it around the fitting and not have a bunch of excess sticking out. 
The instructions say to wrap it around a minimum of three times. I did it about five just to make sure that I didn't have any fuel leaking out in there. And then I just tightened it up with a wrench. Now we can reassemble, replace a couple of hoses. You can also do AN fittings and stuff like that in this uh, particular case, but I'm just doing this uh, just to uh, eliminate the fuel pulsation dampener. From what I've read online, these can be the source of leaks and engine fires, and the last thing I want is my FD to catch on fire. Uh, the other thing that I will say while we're talking fuel rails is I'm not going to be running the stock fuel pressure regulator. So I'm going to ditch this guy and I'm going to be replacing it with an adapter that Sard makes. And I got this on Amazon. And it will just bolt right up. And then I can run a 90 degree fitting over here that's barbed to 5 16 for my return uh, and to the fuel pressure regulator. That's just a quick breakdown of how to do this modification and just make sure that you get everything in there straight so that this fits nicely the whole way around and make sure you get plenty of wraps with a fuel safe Teflon tape so that you don't have any leaks. So obviously you're going to need a new piece of fuel line in order to connect all of this and it's going to need to be long enough to reach back to your, your other lines and you're also gonna need a hose clamp unless you wanna reuse these buggers, whatever you wanna do, uh, whatever works for you. So thanks for watching, I appreciate it and I'll see you next time.